Sometimes you can't find your ancestor, but they're waiting to be discovered. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about two advanced online genealogy database search strategies to help you find your ancestors. Howdy, I'm Devin Noel Lee with Family History Fanatics, where we love to help you climb your family tree and have a lot of fun along the way. Be sure you always check out the description for links to our blog, our webinars, and a lot of other goodies that will be of interest to you. So I'm gonna share with you two advanced online search strategies where you can find your ancestors in searchable collections. We do talk about browsing images, and there's a link to that video in the description, but your ancestor might be in the search forms, you just have to change how you search for them. Now the strategies I'm going to feature do apply to ancestry and family search, and I'll tell you which one has a little more trouble as we go along. You can try these strategies on any genealogically relevant website that has searchable collections. The two that come to my mind right now are Find My Past and My Heritage, but I know you can try it on just about anything that has a search form. First, let's talk about a couple of the reasons why you're not finding your ancestor in the search forms. The first one should be fairly obvious to experienced researchers, but making sure everybody is on the same page, our ancestors' names were not always spelled the same. They weren't consistent. My last name, Geisler, is spelled more the ways than I can count, and it doesn't always begin with a G. So I had to use wildcard searches, which I'll link to a video in the description for your help if you need help with wildcard searches but a lot of times the names are misspelled and that's why you're not finding your ancestor. Another cause of not finding your ancestor is that the person who recorded the record had really bad handwriting. And so the indexer who typed the information into your searchable database did the very best they could. <laughs> so blame the handwriter, not the indexer. There also could be a situation when somebody created a record and they had the wrong name attached to your relative. It could be the wrong first name, it could be the wrong middle name, it could be the wrong surname. Regardless, they're not on, in the records under the name that you expected them to have. The other problem is that records are damaged from water, fire, flood, ink blots, who knows? and sometimes that damage will corrupt the ability to see your ancestor's name. The rest of the details is there for them, but you can't ring their stinking name. <laughs> so there are some strategies to try to find out where they're hiding. Now, before you start diving into the records to try a no name or a no surname search, you need to review what you actually do know about your ancestors. Now, in this case, we're actually gonna talk about Elizabeth Jane Weekly Pitney Sparks, or Jane Weekly Sparks. <laughs> she has a lot of last names. I'm missing her in the 1900 census. That's my question. Where did Jane, Elizabeth Jane go in 1900? The first strategy is called a no name search. And this is something you can achieve more easily on Ancestry than on Family Search. Family Search requires at least one name. So we're here on Ancestry, and I need to get to the collection that will most likely answer the question I have. Where is Jane in the 1900 census if she lived in Ohio and Missouri? She's somewhere in the United States. So I want to get to a US census collection. Now I'm gonna be honest, when I wanna find something quickly, I use Google and I'll type 1900 US Federal Census and type Ancestry and this gets me quickly into the collection that I want. Don't tell anybody on Ancestry, that's how I do it. <laughs> so here I'm in the 1900 US Census, federal, federal Census, and I am not going to put anything in this field because I've tried her name, I've tried various combinations, and she's just not showing up. So instead, what I'm gonna do is type the year 1818, and I'm gonna limit it to just plus one year. She could be 1817 or 1819, and I'm gonna leave the birth location off for now. She happens to live in West Virginia, and depending on the record, it could be 
West Virginia was where she was born or Virginia was where she was born. It, it just all kind of depends on who's doing the recording. But I do know she possibly lived in Howard County, Missouri. So I'm gonna type that in, Howard County, Missouri. And I'm gonna click exact. I want this place. I don't want any other place, just Howard County, Missouri. And I'm gonna go and click on the search at the bottom. Now, I'll be honest, what I really do is hit the enter button and then it usually goes. There we go. Now, this isn't so bad. She's born in 1818 and she could be living in Howard County, Missouri. There's 33 entries and I can look to see, do any of these names stand out? I'm looking for um, names that might have been her, fan, her parents, her siblings, her children, something that jumps out or the same thing with a surname, any neighbors, because again, she could be under there a wrong name, but it was probably a name that I would recognize unless she changed her name, which is a different story for another day. So as I scrolled through 33 names, it didn't jump out anything, nothing really jumped out at me. So another thing I could do is I can expand the county. I can expand to just the state and update and back out and try different locations. But one of the problems is I get to 4,885 search results. And on Ancestry, there's no way here really to filter these results by gender or some other key factors. So what I'm gonna do instead of continuing with this no name search is I'm gonna go do a different search. The reason why I wanted to point out this strategy is that on Ancestry, they have come across records where there was no name recorded. Or remember those ink blocks or damaged pages that I told you about earlier? And so they will record a no name person in a collection with these details and they will show up with this field over here where it says name and there won't be a name. So Ancestry actually does have and encourage people to do a no name search, but just make sure you're looking in a specific location in a specific record collection for you to have any chance of success. If you thought the first one might take a lot of time, this next one takes a lot of time. But if you're trying to leave no stone unturned and you can't find your stubborn ancestor, it may pay to do this search. Now, as it applies, it means searching without a surname. So unlike no names in the given name in the surname field, this is a search with at least a first name. As I said, this is going to be a no surname search. So I'm gonna type in Elizabeth. What's really great is you don't always have to put a wild card. They're starting to do fuzzy searches or wild card searches for the ver various ways that Elizabeth shows up in records. And they also pick up common nicknames like Lizzie, which is great. So just type in what you know. I typed in a birthplace of Virginia in the birth year of 1817 to 1818. And I'm gonna click search. Each time I've run this search, I've actually gotten a different search results number. So when I wrote the blog post to go along with this um, video, there was 1,700 names. Now there's 258, 2,580 names. <laughs> but we are limited to the 1900 census. So how can we actually narrow it down and make it a little more manageable to look for an Elizabeth with no surname? Because we're still looking at a lot of names. What's really great about family search is you're allowed to filter by a number of different things. And I'm gonna filter by gender first. So I'm gonna filter to female, and now I'm down to about 1,700 names. Now what I'm gonna do is believe it or not, even though I put the range of 1817 to 1818, Family Search is still giving me more results than I need. So I'm gonna come down here and go to birth year 1800. And after I do that, now I have 351 names. So now what I can do is I can either change from the 20 names to 50 names to 100. I'm actually gonna search a list of 100 names because then I just have a few pages to look through. And I'm gonna start looking for anything that jumps out at me. Now, you may have trouble keeping track of all of those names of possibilities, and this is when a surname table might come in handy, but remember that tracks 
Elizabeth's ancestral name. So go ahead and pull out the surname table, but also write down the names of in-laws for her siblings, in-laws for her children, and her neighbor's last names from when she lived in the different places she lived. She lived in Howard County, Missouri and Licking County, Ohio. So I can write down the, the neighbors there because maybe she went to another location with the neighbor or with her children. When I stumbled across this name, because I'm just scanning, I, I'm, I'm not diving record by record first, I'm just scanning. When I came across Elizabeth Blue, my genealogy spidey senses started tingling because I noticed this female's name of Matilda and I knew that Elizabeth had a daughter named Matilda and I thought her husband's name was Blue. So before I checked into this record, I went and looked at my other sources. Sure enough, Matilda had married a John. I hadn't figured out where they'd moved to after they left Ohio and they actually move to South Carolina. Now, just because the names look good doesn't mean that's our record. So we're gonna actually dive into things a little bit better. John Blue from Virginia. Could be West Virginia, but he's from Virginia. Matilda Blue, born in Ohio. William R. Blue, born in Ohio, lines up, age lines up. Elizabeth Blue, grandmother from Virginia. Now, I had to go one step further and make sure that I did descendancy research on John and family research on John. John does not have a grandmother named Elizabeth and he does not have a mother named Elizabeth. So the only possible grandmother left would be the grandmother, which would be the mother of Matilda. And so I finally found them. Now I hope that you will give these strategies to try when you're looking for your ancestors and you just can't find them. You never know, they might show up. If you want more tips and tricks on how to search online, be sure to check out this playlist right here. And if you're ready for something new, check out this one right here. I'm the Colorado Beef Burritos again today and I was wondering if he should have something else. Yes. Okay. And if he's not going to change, he can wait. Okay. I don't know if I should use that one as a blooper. <laughs>